And I, I've also been having kind of spontaneous joy for the first time in my life. I don't think I've ever had that before. I mean, of course it comes and goes. Um, and I don't know if that's just a random, you know, thing that's happened or if it, there's some meaning to it. I'm delighted to have it, <laughs> but also don't particularly expect it to last. Right. Nothing lasts at all anyway. Yes. So I don't think that's it. I think it's like what's behind that is what I'm trying to ask about. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, I mean, who can say in your case, the source of spontaneous joy, but generally speaking, if there's allowance for the space, or time recognizing the space or being space, being that in which everything is arising, being nothing or simple awareness. That's a good way of saying it. Yeah, just being that then often what happens is there's um, not not always right away, not always at the same time, often not at the same time, in fact, but the more space given, the more that joy will arise spontaneously. we there is a kind of conditional joy that we we you could say we strive for often or we wish for maybe that's a better way of saying it. that has to do with things in life lining up according to our desires right that's a kind of situational joy right i've i've had that yes this is not that. Right. So this is not that. This is joy that doesn't have anything to do with the situation or conditions. Um, it's simply the after effect of transcendence. You could say the it's, I don't know if it's an after effect even. I mean, there's this whole I, way of speaking, sat, chit, ananda, being consciousness and bliss or well-being or joy. It seems that when the context when the context, when, you know, simply said, when the self or the no self, the context becomes prominent, then basically, or, ha or there's moments when there's, when we are arising as the context, as the self, as the no self, as the Buddha nature, or, or we recognize, or there's a recognition that that's actually the case or you could say a remembrance, but not a mental remembrance, but actually time spent <laughs> or timeless spent. There's this clear seeing of, through seeing with naked awareness, recognition, self-recognition, through seeing with naked awareness, 
through seeing with intrinsic awareness. Then um, there's a joy because it's freedom, freedom itself. It's freedom. It's space. It has nothing to do with circumstances. And it's so much larger than circumstances. Circumstances are almost a joke. Or they're just... They're non-binding. They're not... They're not the point. So there's a joy that seeps through, that comes through the other side that um, it may be that it's simply the appropriate feeling state of recognizing the actual situation but it isn't really quite that the ego is recognizing the exact situation and that's why it's for the ego, it's sort of like, oh, it just came unbidden, un, un, you know, unexpected, because it doesn't, it doesn't, um, it doesn't have anything to do with any kind of accomplishment or any kind of wish fulfillment or anything like that. And so it doesn't make sense for the ego, for the, for the thinking mind. But there's a recognition. Wow, something, something's happening. Yeah. Yeah. There's 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 a way in which um, the kind of situations that are usually considered. Um, accursed you know like things aren't going well oh, the political situation isn't going well and the the climate isn't going well and I mean, maybe there's problems in the neighborhood or problems with your bank account or with your relationships or something like that and um of course, that kind of thing, that kind of thing can, you can get drawn into the, the scenario and feel suffering and anger and frustration. That's definitely um, one possibility with that. Um, but, and there's the potential in that, in this kind of situation to just lose hope in samsara, in phenomenality, to like to get it like, oh wow, even if it aligns again, this is a possibility, or this can happen a moment later, or even more, um, you know, cynically, or not cynically, but maybe I should say pessimistically, or, but you know, the, the sense that, oh, well, it's just not gonna, it's not really gonna align for me for the rest of my days. It's just not, you know, it's just, the situation is just not circumstances aren't in that there is the possibility of just letting go of that project just letting go of the project of you know having you know the universe line up according to your wishes or according to your desire it's just not and so there's a kind of letting go in that and a transcendence that happens in the letting go. Well, I think it's un understanding and allowing myself to not know. Not know what? Really anything. Okay, that works. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's just it's it's like um, allowing myself to not know and suddenly spontaneous joy arises that yeah. that's really 
that's really what I think is. And even a, even a, allowing yourself to not know yourself, the sense of the one who's letting go, the sense of the one that is not knowing, even not knowing that one. Yeah. Just being. Well, there's, there's sort of an energetic almost a dissolving unbounded sense of nothing makes any sense really in words reality is the word I wanted to say but It, I mean, it's almost like a drug state. Like a what state? Like a drug state. I guess it depends on the drug, yeah. <laughs> but there's a, <laughs> but there's alertness as well. And right, there's, there's presence. Yeah. But um, it's not what I would. It's a it's a funny thing. It's this is the this is the could say the there's like a fulcrum there there's like a, a door that swings both directions there's a way in which you know absolutely yes and there's another way in which it's not a state at all I mean in other words that what we're describing is not necessary it's more like the outcome the necessary or necessary is not even the quite word the, the the reality is the context that's simply aware of everything and whether it's aware of a contracted state with an eye sense or it's aware of um, an expanded state with a dissolved sense of eye it's always present. So that's the tricky thing with this Sat Chit Ananda thing. In other words, Chit, like consciousness, Sat, being, always the case. And in a sense, there's an Ananda or a kind of a bliss or an inherent well being in that. But within that inherent be well-being can be a sense of contraction and a sense of not well-being also if the other two are not seen, if being and consciousness are not owned. Maybe that's a better way of saying it. You know, owning, be, owning the sense of being, owning the sense of consciousness, meaning just con unconditioned awareness or just simple awareness. But simple awareness is there no matter what state you're in. So th that's the, the tricky part. Would you talk about the difference between owning and trying to hold, grasping? Yeah. So even the word owning is not quite right. It's the best I could, <laughs> I could come up with in the moment. This is kind of wordless. What I mean by owning is, um, um, you know, you'll see somebody who's, um, somebody just did a wonderful uh, piece of music, just played impeccably and so moving. And then you talk to them right afterwards and they say, oh, well, it was okay. And you go, no, own it. You're a great musician. 
own it. It's more or less stepping into what you are, stepping into the space. It's not really, it's the opposite of grasping or holding. So the word own again, it's when, when I said it, I meant it in the sense of being it. But being it and owning it imply that it's possible not to be it. Um, but owning it, it's, it's more like recognizing what is already the case. That's what I meant by owning it. I didn't mean it in the sense of a deed, but I meant it more like a popular sense of own it, girl. It's your, it's there, it, you know, be it. You are that. So that's what I mean by owning. Um, you know, another word for it is being it. But you, you can't not be it. Owning is a little bit better because there's a sense of like consciously identifying it with it. What's already the case. Does that make sense, Rebecca? Uh, it, it makes sense, but I don't. Hmm. Like you are the silence. You don't have to be silent. You are the silence. That is what you are. You are the space. You don't have to be the space. There is no distance at all between you and silence, consciousness, beingness. None. Zero. And it's as though that has become more prominent than anything else. Well, the recognition has become yeah. more prominent. It has always been the case. That's the thing, the recognition of what you are, of what is the case. It's not even you that's it. Mm -hmm. It's more accurate to say that you are being, it is being you. Of course. Right? It's mm -hmm. always the case. Mm -hmm. And it is being you. But recognizing it is being you is, you know, it's it words fall apart here just as you said at the very beginning very much so yeah this this is what they talk about is spontaneous awareness yeah or intrinsic awareness i like really well because intrinsic spontaneous i mean again it's it's impossible words that fall apart but you know spontaneous makes it sound like I was, it just started happening, but it didn't happen at some point and then spontaneously it happened. But intrinsic is always the case. It's intrinsic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's recognition. Exactly. Mm 